my name is Alexander Kerr. And today we will talk about Transpark and how to use it to analyze SNPs. Special attention will pay to comparing Transpark Professional versus Transpark Public and Jasper database. So let's have a look. As you know, in Transpark you have a lot of transitional weight matrices and one of it you can see here where um, we collect information from many binding sites, um, from the literature, to build such matrices, and you can see um, the positional weight matrix can produce a logo. And then this matrix can be used to search for new uh, potential transcription factor binding sites in regulatory regions of any gene. In case of uh, SNP, so the change of uh, one nucleotide to another, um, the score of the binding site can either drop or increase. In this case, we can get either uh, the loss of the binding site or the gain of the new site. Let's look at coronavirus. We know that interferon inhibits coronavirus, but coronavirus inhibits interferon. Uh, for instance, we know that uh, in this paper it was shown uh, that interferon system uh, regulation is inhibited by many proteins from coronavirus, especially in fact it is RS3. RS3 especially is a transcription factor which is uh, involved in the regulation of interferon genes. And it's um, also documented in the transfer database. As you can see, it's involved in many diseases, especially in coronavirus, uh, where it was shown that on the protein level and as well uh, transcription level, the RS3 is uh, inhibited. And the transcription factor uh, has a lot of mat positional weight matrices in transfer. Another important uh, factor is vitamin D. Uh, we know that vitamin D is involved in coronavirus uh, severity, and in re recent uh, papers it was shown that vitamin uh, D is especially important for severity. We know that the major risk factor of the COVID-19 uh, is inherited from Neanderthals. And uh, the study of the uh, genome-wide association studies in chromosome 3 revealed that this SNP, which is located in this gene, which uh, plays a major uh, role in that um, severity. So if you look at the SNP database, we definitely see this uh, position, uh, the, uh, the SNP. We can download this data from, uh, from this database and put it in for analysis into our platform. So basically we use Transpark, we log in on it, and now we, let's have a look at Transpark Professional. So we start here the GeneXplain platform, we log in in it, and uh, we would load here the uh, SNP data. So first, let's create uh, the uh, uh, the project and uh, the folder where we can save the uh, data. So now we load the, uh, this data from uh, the database, from the SNP database. They are now loaded. So we have to select the proper format for loading. Actually, it's a SNP uh, data. So now you see the SNPs in the platform. So the next step uh, is to take those SNPs and to uh, un uh, convert them into, um, into um, actually the track. So um, locate them, put them on the, on the genome. And uh, now the track is ready. You see we can visualize this track in, a, in, in our genome browser. So we can put here more information about the genes, about known SNPs from the SNP database. We can have a look at the data uh, from that SNP. We can look at the data from the database. But now we want to find basically the, uh, the SNP of our interest. Let's uh, Google the gene. Uh, this is a, uh, let's copy the ensemble from that gene, ensemble ID, put it here and jump to that gene in the genome browser. Now we want to find this SNP in the genome browser. Uh, here it is. And uh, yeah, you see this information about the SNP. And basically, this SNP is changing from uh, G in reference genome into alternative allele of uh, GA. So it's actually an insertion of uh, one 
the letter A. Next, we want to analyze uh, this SNP by searching for uh, binding sites for transcription factors which are changed by new uh, SNP. And for that, we start this uh, program called mutation effects on sites. So we put there the, uh, the actually the whole profile from whole library of Transpark. We set a cutoff, uh, basically checking uh, what is the difference between uh, the binding sites before the SNP and after the SNP and the run analysis. Here we see the result, the analysis is ready. So it found um, actually many binding sites which are affected by those SNPs. Let's have a look at the SNP of our interest. We simply uh, and basically uh, filter that output and now what we see are two important factors. Actually, we, uh, as you can see, VDR and RS read. Let's uh, put this information on the genome browser. You see those sites which are actually gained or lost and due to that mutation. And we see that the loss and the gain is very important. Let's have a look on Transpark public. So let's do the same with using the Transpark public database. Basically, we have uh, this uh, database is um, containing a few um, matrices, much fewer than in in a uh, professional version. So, but uh, we can run it here in the platform. Basically, we have Transpark Public here, and to run it, we have to take the uh, Transpark Public um, profile and put in the same program. Let's put the same cutoff, the same regions to the gene, and change the name of the output uh, for the, uh, let's add just P, means public, and now we see the result. So if you seek, we search for the um, for that same SNP in that output, uh, we see just two uh, binding sites which were uh, predicted uh, using Transpark database, and no RAF3 and no VDR were predicted. Reasonably, because actually there are no RF3 matrix in Transpark public and no VDR matrix in Transpark. Let's have a look at Jasper database. We go to the, uh, uh, to the latest Jasper, load it into the platform, and uh, run the same analysis. Basically, take this uh, SNPs from the, uh, uh, take the, put here the uh, Jasper profile, the same cutoffs, uh, rename now the outputs, adding letter G to the output, run it. Now we get the results. Again, let's search for the SNPs of our interest. Here the output is much bigger, so we found several binding sites which are changed due to that SNP. So Jasper database uh, is quite reasonable. But, and we actually found VDR uh, data, um, uh, site, but what about RAF3? There is no RF3, so we cannot find RF3 using Jasper. And the reason is because in Jasper, we have just one matrix for RF3. Whereas in Transpark, you see how many positional weight matrices collected from different papers are for the RF3. Let's have a look at that matrix which was found in that SNP. And interestingly, this matrix was built by our team and it was built using information from binding sites from actually SARS coronavirus infection. So that's why probably it was found in this case, but when we used uh, just one matrix from Jasper was not possible. In summary, we can uh, show that uh, when we analyze this SNP, which is very important as a risk factor for severe COVID-19, we used Transpark Professional and we found very important changes in transcription factor binding sites for VDR and IRF3. Both are very important uh, factors, as we know, for severity. Uh, although when we use Transpark Public, we cannot identify neither of them. And Jasper was okay by uh, predicting VDR binding sites, but uh, we miss IRF3 uh, binding sites using Jasper. And the reason is because uh, the IRF3 matrix, which, uh, was, which is present in Jasper, 
is just not enough. In Transpac, we have nine different uh, position weight matrices, and one of them, which was built uh, by our efforts uh, using information from binding sites of IRF3 acting in, uh, in COVID or other corona infections. So such matrix was more effective to detect the, uh, the binding sites for IRF3, which are changed uh, due to the SNPs, um, which are related and which are you know, connected to COVID-19. Thank you very much.